to my channel. So this is my unpopular natural hair edition uh, video. I'm gonna be talking about some unpopular opinions. Uh, so let's just get into it. Number one, sulfates. Some people say that follow the curly girl method, say that sulfates are the devil. I think I've mentioned this in one of my videos about natural hair or myths or whatever. It's kind of similar, right? Well, sulfates to me are not the devil. I would definitely say that putting sulfates in your hair every time you wash is definitely not good for your hair because it does strip your hair. But I do think that sulfates do allow um, to clean your scalp, not want excess buildup on your hair. And sulfates definitely remove that where co-washing or um, shampoos that don't have sulfates in it do not completely get rid of buildup. And you might find that your hair isn't receiving product properly or not, you know, curling right or popping or they're it's dry and that's because your hair probably needs to be clarified and a great way to clarify is using a sulfate shampoo you can use other products like the bentonite clay treatment and things like that but i still like to use sulfate shampoo and i definitely use that right before i straighten i use it after i straighten I also use it before i even do a bentonite clay treatment because i like my hair to be clean i like my scalp to be clean it is a great breeding ground for my hair to grow I just don't overdo it everything in moderation that leads into my number two uh Silicone. So I use silicones every time I wash my hair, all right? I use silicones. I use Aussie Moist, which is my detangler. I stopped using my Aussie Moist for about six months at one point. And I did it because I thought I had to abide by the curly girl method, or at least I wanted to try the curly girl method. And I thought that if I did that, I would see like magnificent results or whatever. And one day I thought to myself, why don't I stop using Aussie Moist again? No, oh, because I wanted to do the curly girl method. Hmm, I'm gonna buy it and try it. When I tried it again, I was like, why did I stop using this stuff? This stuff has the most amazing slip. I found that I was losing more strands of hair when I wasn't using Elsie Moist because I had to take the time to do extra finger combing or extra combing to get knots and tangles out because there was no slit I could find like my Aussie Moist, like that, those silicones and the Aussie Moist that provide the slip. And my hair grows fine. As you guys have seen, for the last year, my hair has grown a tremendous amount. And I've been using silicones every week. And I would say the bad thing about silicones is that it causes buildup. So again, if you're using doing the curly girl method and you're not using a sulfate or c properly clarifying your hair, then yes, uh, silicones will, are not for you because you will get buildup and buildup is a bad breeding ground for hair growth because when you get buildup, your hair doesn't have the air to breathe. I'm mean, sorry, your scalp doesn't have the air to breathe and then your hair doesn't have the, it's not a healthy breeding ground for your hair to grow in because it can cause fungus and da, 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 you know, unhealthy scalp and all that. So yeah, I think those things go hand in hand. All right, number three, edges, baby hairs. Okay. For someone who has natural baby hairs, all right, natural baby hairs, this is with water only. I have sideburn baby hairs and I have, you know, edges baby hairs, all right? As someone who has natural baby hairs, when I see someone take strands of their real hair and gel it, swooping it, I just be like, girl. All right, so let me just be keep it real. Some of y'all, really do cool baby hair edges like designs i'm an artist i appreciate art okay some of y'all do like these cool little like curl swirls and then going in the opposite direction swirl i think i actually think those are cute because it's just like you're having fun with your hair you're designing your hair you're trying to have fun with your edges you're making art in my opinion but when people be swooping the swoop the swoop the swoop the swoop the swoop it just looks so like you're trying too hard you're trying to have baby hairs. So when I see someone faking the baby hairs as in gelling edges to their scalp, uh, hairs that just lay here, and you know, most of the time I use water. Sometimes I use gel when I'm about to go out and I don't want them to move and I, you know, whatever. But I feel like people, uh, maybe I shouldn't even go into this. Basically, I feel like, and I'm not even gonna go into this because I know <laughs> I will get some backlash for about, about what I feel about it, but people who do not naturally have baby hairs should not gel their broken edges to their face. I think it looks tacky. I think some really beautiful, like solid hairlines that don't have any baby hairs at all. They're just like their hairs come straight out long and there's no edges or that are like fine like this. And it looks fine. Like I just feel like people should accept that and stop trying to like basically fit in to like something that their hair doesn't naturally do and breaking the hair off in the process. Ooh, that was a tough one. All right, number four, 
uh, cheap gels are bad for your hair. Now, I know y'all love your Eco Style Gel. I know y'all love your wet line, and I'm not gonna lie. I used to use Eco Style Gel, and I actually still use wet line, <laughs> but I do not use wet line or Eco Style Gel on my body of hair. I use wet line, like I said before, when I'm about to go out and I wanna make sure my baby hairs and edges stay nice put. I will put a little wet line just to keep them down and keep them from you know moving around and stuff like that. I will never put wet line in my the body of my hair. I think I put wet line in my hair one time because I ran out of gel, I ran out of my uh, kinky curly, and I was sad because oh my god, wet line was horrific. It was horrific. It made my hair so dry. Uh, eco Styler Gel. I used to use that religiously. I used to be a big Eco Styler Gel fan when I first uh, cut all my hair off back in 2013. And I did that for years, years. And then around like 2015, 2016, I realized, well, I'm not putting this crap in my hair. This stuff is drying the sugar out of my hair. Kinky Curly, at that point, I had been using it for a while. And I'm like, Kinky Curly does the job. Kinky Curly keeps my hair nice and moisturized. I don't have to restyle. I don't have to revamp. I don't have to do none of that with Kinky Curly. And Kinky Curly has amazing ingredients. Why am I using Gustalogen again? And wet line's just as bad. Honestly, I think wet line's a little worse as far as the body of the hair. No, I will never use Eco Style Gel or wet line on the body of my hair ever again, okay? God forbid I run out of gel. You look at the ingredients, it's filled with chemicals, it's filled with proteins that are really high. Um, most people's hairs, especially natural hair, is low porosity, and low porosity doesn't really need proteins. The only time you really need a protein is if you have colored hair, if your hair is colored, you have heat trained hair, you have a relaxer, okay then maybe you know those type of gels won't be too bad for you because your hair is a higher porosity and it can withstand that kind of protein. But when you have a lower porosity hair, you I wouldn't say you're protein sensitive because I'm not really protein sensitive, but I can't overdo the protein, alright? Because if I were to do an Afro G hair treatment on my hair right now, I think my hair will fall out, okay? So yeah, you don't need, if you don't need it, don't put it in your hair because protein will break your hair off just as much as it will protect your hair if you actually need it, you know what I'm saying? Don't get cheap gels, spend the money, get a proper gel, get uh, Uncle Funky's Daughter is really good, lots of slip, lots of good ingredients. Uh, Curl Maker by Camille Rose is really good too, cheaper than, um, way cheaper than K Kiki Curly, and I think Uncle Funky's Daughter is even cheaper than uh, Curl Maker. He, uh, Uncle Funky's daughter is like $16. And it's stuff lasts, all right? I know it's not like, you know, your $2 Eco Style Gel, but I promise you, you, your hair will thank you, okay? Your moisture in your hair will last longer. Your hair will thrive, be popping a lot more. Even though I know Eco Style be popping curls, it dries your hair out. It dries your hair out, and you need moisturized hair to have your hair stay popping, stay healthy, stay growing, okay? Number five, protective styles and wash and goes. So, you can wear a wash and go as a protective style. You can wear a wash and go to grow your hair out long. That's what I'm trying to say. A lot of people feel like you have to wear protective styles to grow your hair long. You have to wear your wigs, your weeds, your braids, corn rolls, whatever, to grow your hair long. Um, and that wash and goes will dry your hair out. And people who wear wash and goes, their hair always gets knots and blah, 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 blah. That is not true. I feel like people who are doing wash and goes, getting knots and stuff, and their hair is drying out, and they're, you know, they're, their hair's not growing on wash and goes, it means you're doing it wrong. You have to figure out a regimen. A regimen consists of a some type of cleanser, deep conditioning for with, with heat, with heat, that's key, with heat for like an hour. I do an hour, you could do between 20 minutes to, to 45 minutes, you could do 20 minutes to an hour, whatever, but no less than 20 minutes with heat. Um, do not dry your hair with a towel. I will, my hair will be soaking wet. I just shake it off when I, when I, once I rinse it off, uh, my deep conditioner off. Properly detangling. I use my like, Aussie Moist to detangle my hair in the shower, so it's pretty much detangled by the time I get out before I deep condition. I put the deep conditioner on top of my Aussie Moist, as y'all know. A leave-in, which is also a moisturizer, a heavy moisturizer, which, whatever is good for your hair. If your hair is finer, then maybe not as heavy. A sealant. Oils are important. Some people don't believe in oils, but oils are important. You can get a, nat a light oil if your hair is not too keen to heavier oils, like jojoba oil is really good. Coconut oil, I know some people don't like coconut oil because of the protein in it. Then again, get some jojoba oil, get some greasy oil, lighter ho uh, oils, or heavier oils and butters like shea butter, castor oil, stuff like that. Those type of things. Avocado oil, like 
oil to seal that moisture in all right whether your hair is low or high you i feel like you need an oil okay of some kind or a butter of some kind my hair stays moisturized I, my hair is never dry never dry my hair is only dry when i go to straighten my hair because i wash it three times with the with a uh, clarifying shampoo but other than that when i wear my hair curly my hair is moisturized from day one to day eight because i wear my hair a total of eight days technically so an oil okay as you guys know i sell a butter it's called hair by pierre butter oil mix it has all your carrier butters essential oils and stuff in it this is how i get my, keep my hair moisturized you know it's a five star review guys if you want to purchase it's in the link below okay an oil and a good styler like kinky curly curly custard which has great ingredients in it things like that stylers like that you can wear a wash and go to grow your hair out i have definitely worn wash and goes straight for three months and gained the full one inch and a half the whole straight three months because my hair goes a half an inch a month so i've done it before and my hands were still fine like you definitely can definitely go um wear wash and goes and grow your hair out i think also too with the knots the knots are probably because you need a trim the knots are also probably because you're not detangling properly you're not moisturizing properly it's one of those or it's all of those okay so don't believe that wash and goes will not your hair up and all of that because it's not true also to also to also to a nighttime routine not laying your head all over the pillow all over your couch like there's a lot of factors that go into it it's not that complicated especially when it's a lifestyle for yourself but definitely can do that if you like your wash and goes and you want to walk your wash and goes you can you just have to find what works for you so that you can wear them and at any length and also too, i want to add that protective styles are not always protective styles some people get braids and they're pulling too hard at their edges and then they end up getting alopecia or they end up their edges end up falling out or you get cornrows for a wig or a weave and the cornrows are too tight or the the uh the string from weaving your hair like the weaving the string can friction against your hair and cause a lot of breakage same with the wefts on um the wefts on weaves even wigs the combs from wigs cause breakage cause thinning cause tugging and pulling they're not always protective sometimes really just wearing your own hair with your own hair weight is what's the best because sometimes the weight of extra length hair extra braid length braids the weight of extra weaves the weight is too much because it's not your hair it's on your top of your hair and it's using your hair and your scalp as a anchor and that can be very cause a lot of tension and a lot of breakage so be mindful that just because you know you think it's called a protective style doesn't mean it's going to protect your hair and just because it's a wash and go doesn't mean you're gonna get knots and tangles and dryness okay number six hair typing isn't everything okay so with hair typing now i do type my hair i would say i'm a 3c 4a you know i have a mixture of that and um but it's not everything because you have to factor in other things just because my hair looks like yours doesn't mean it acts like yours doesn't mean it's like the same products as yours why because you might have more density than i do you might have less density than i do you might have thicker strands you might have thinner strands you might have high porosity i have low porosity so those things really factor in a lot more because low porosity and high porosity determine how moisture absorbs into your hair meaning how your hair will receive a product just because my hair is 3C, 4A and your hair is 3C, 4A too, doesn't mean we're going to be able to use the same product if you're high porosity. If your hair is colored or heat treated or something, my hair is not colored and heat treated. So that means your hair is going to need a lot more moisture, a lot more locking, and then mine might need or vice versa. Like those things factor in. Also too, if your hair is thicker than mine, you might need more product than I do. If I only need like an ample amount of product and you need a whole handful of product, if you see me using this much of product and you think we have the same hair type and you only use this amount of product and you're like, why is my hair dry? And because your hair is more dense than mine, it's because you and I do not have the same hair. You might need more product for your hair. So just because you see somebody on YouTube and they have the same hair as you, don't say, oh, we're hair twins. Oh, we're exactly alike, blah, blah, blah. Or you might be hair twins hair typing wise, but to keep in mind that to take care of your hair, you need a lot more than hair typing than just we have the same texture we have the same hair uh, type or whatever you need to worry about texture texture comes with thickness and thinness of strands density how many strands are on your head porosity high low how you absorb moisture those things are, way, are like a lot more important than hair typing because i can look at somebody with 3b curls and my hair acts like theirs because their hair is low porosity their hair absorbs moisture the same as mine you know what i'm saying or for instance somebody might have really really thick 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 dense hair 
but and their twists look so fat and mine look way thinner than theirs and i'm like but we have the same hair type we have the same hair te uh, texture or curl pattern why is her hair so strand why are her twists thicker than mine i don't understand why because she has more strands on her head so yeah keep that in mind number seven you can straighten your hair with heat and not get heat damage now i sometimes get side comments from people because i have strands of hair that are looser mostly like in my crown like right this one and in the front on the side people think it's heat damage it's not i promise okay i straighten my hair and because i straighten my hair sometimes people i'm gonna tell you guys a story i used to be a part of a group on facebook called type four and um i was in the group why because i have 4a hair I have 3C hair too, but I have 4A hair too as well. And I would post my pictures and things like that or whatever. And sometimes my pictures would not get posted. Or I would get hate comments saying, well, you have heat damage. Well, you have, your hair's not 4. Why are you on here trying to make us jealous? One, whoa. Why are you that insecure about your hair type that you think I'm trying to come in to make you jealous when I definitely have 4A hair? And two, I do not have heat damage. My hair is naturally like this. And if you've been watching me a long time, since my hair has been cut off, my texture here in the front has been like this on this side. This side is slightly different, okay? The hair is down here, slightly different. The hair is up here, a lot different, okay? So I straighten my hair, my hair bounces back the exact same way every time I bounce back. Why? Because this is just my hair texture and I'm really hip to my hair texture now that if I got heat damage, I will know. <laughs> and I've had enough heat damage in my life to know what heat damage looks like on my hair. But what I'm trying to say is, is that you can straighten your hair and not get heat damage as long as you do it right. You have to make sure you're cleansing your hair, getting all the oils out because oil holds in um, heat a lot longer, causing heat damage. Make sure to use a protein treatment to coat and, sh and coat your hair so that when the heat comes onto your hair, it, it eats up the protein first. Make sure to deep condition to add the moisture in your hair so your hair is fully moisturized, not dried out, so your hair is not getting eaten away by the heat. Make sure you make sure your hair is completely dry before you blow dry. Water, again, water causes your hair to bubble inside the shaft, causing it to explode and cause, causes uh, split ends. Uh, there's a lot of factors. That's why I take so long to straighten my hair. It's like a two day process for me now because I found the right method to straighten my hair without getting heat damage. You can straighten your hair, get beautiful results, and come back curly with beautiful results. It's possible, which leads into the next thing. Just because, with two sides. Just because your hair is, a, you stay 100% curly does not mean your hair is healthy. I've seen naturals that stay curly all year long. I know a lot of people get the uh, misconstrued idea that if you stay curly for like a year, your hair is gonna be, just grow like inches and crazy and it's gonna be so long and beautiful and all that stuff. Now this is somewhat true. But if you're not taking care of your hair, you're not properly detangling, moisturizing, deep conditioning, washing, trimming, if you're not, especially trimming, if you're not doing these things, your hair will probably be the same length. And I've done a lot of research on this because like, as you guys know, every now and then I go through this phase where I'm like, oh, I wanna stay curly for a year or I stay curly till I get to my goal or whatever. And I feel like I have a good regimen down pat, so there's really no need for me to do that. But sometimes I just think, you know what? I really enjoy my curly hair, straightening my hair. It's not a hassle for me, but you know, I don't know. It's just a mindset, I guess. I don't even know. It's like an OCD mindset, which I'm not even gonna get into. But basically, I done a lot of research on people who have protective style for a year, stayed curly for a year, but they don't trim, right? Their hair will be the same, same length the following year. Like I've seen someone who went from January one year to January the following year, didn't trim the entire year. I was like, oh my, my hair's gonna grow so long. I'm about to stay curly this whole year, yeah. And then the next year, their hair is the same length. The most it would be maybe is a little thicker, but it's about the same length because they didn't do what they needed to do during that time. So just just because, I'm not saying you it won't happen, especially if you do do the right things, but just because you're staying curly forever doesn't mean your hair is gonna grow, all right? Or, stay, or retain length or whatever. Same thing goes to the other side of the spectrum, which is straightening their hair all the time. If you are a straight natural, you will plateau at some point. Now, everybody's plateau is different. Sometimes some people's plateau is shoulder length. Some people's plateau is armpit length. Some people's plateau is bra strap length. Some people's plateau is longer than that. Like, I know some people actually have waist length hair and it's up at a plateau because it won't grow any longer because they have heat damage from straightening all the time or just trained hair that is the follicles are weak because they straighten all the time and they don't straighten properly. So yeah, someone might have long hair and it might be heat damage. You might think, oh, their hair's waist length. It's, it's 
well, their hair is like long and they got heat trained hair. What's the problem, you know? But if your goal is to your butt and your hair is waist length and it's stuck at waist length for three or four years because you straighten all the time and you have heat damage, then technically that's not really helping you, right? You're not gonna get to your goal, right? You're still stuck at waist length. Even though waist length is really long, you're still stuck at a length that you're still trying to surpass, right? For example, for me, when I had heat damage, my hair always got stuck at 14 inches. It would not get past that point. 14, 14 inches is about below my bra strap, like right below my bra strap, so mid-back length, right? My hair would get there, I'd be like, yes. And then right before, after it hits 14, it thins out. I have to cut it. And it's because I had heat damage, I had a lot of heat damage. And my hair, I've learned how to ma manage my hair with heat, but before, I didn't do the best things or whatever. I'm not saying I used to do, I didn't use heat every day like some people do, but I still flat ironed on 450, didn't let my, did it on wet hair, things like that. So my hair wouldn't get past that. Now, my, the way that my hair acts now, I am confident I will get past that plateau because I have a nice balance. That's what hair is all about, is balance. And I think the unpopular opinion is you have to have a balance. <laughs> you have to have a balance because there's some YouTubers I know on here that have that are like legit, like I'm straightening my hair, that's what I do. And they've had long hair for a long time and now they're starting to see the repercussions of straightening all the time. Their hair's starting to break off, their hair is staying stagnant, their hair is thinning out. Yeah, it's, you, ha you gotta find moderation. Which goes into the next thing, number eight. Not embracing your hair will keep your hair plateauing. AKA natural hair isn't for everyone. People who don't embrace their natural hair, I guess this is not always true, but this is what I think. People who don't embrace themselves, period, aren't going, basically what I'm trying to say is people who don't embrace their natural hair to its full potential or the way it is, their hair will never get to its full potential. That's what I'm trying to say. Because if you are always straightening your hair, you're not embracing yourself. Now, I know why people like straight hair. And your hair is at its longest length. You get to enjoy your length. It's nice and flippy and floppy. It's shiny. It's silky. Some people think it's easier to manage. I don't think it's easier to manage, but some people do. People got their reasons, right? But if you, don't wear your hair curly, your natural state at all, whether that means you have a relaxer or you just don't wear your hair curly at all. To me, that means you are not embracing yourself fully. And that may, could mean because you don't know how to take care of your hair, you don't know what to do, you don't know what products to use, you don't know anything about your hair. But like everybody else on the YouTube, on the in the YouTube verse, we all help each other learn to take care of our hair. And a lot of us started from where some people were where they don't know anything about their hair and now they're pros, right? Same with me, like I've always been a hair into hair. I didn't know much about taking care of my hair the proper way. And it took a while to really get a regimen going, like a regimen that actually works. So when people don't say like, oh, natural hair isn't for me, it means to me that you are insecure, you don't like your hair. If you don't like your hair, your hair will never get to its full potential. Now, People with wigs and weaves who feel like, oh well, I don't like wearing my real hair because I'm protecting it, so I'm gonna wear a wig and weave. All the time, if you're not embracing your natural hair, meaning you don't give those wigs a break, you don't give those weaves a break ever, that means, that means you're not embracing your hair and your hair's not getting to its full potential. And I mean that meaning your hair's not getting properly moisturized. It's probably not getting trimmed as often as it needs. It's probably not breathing the way it needs to be breathing. You're not getting deep conditions the way you're supposed to. You're not getting, your hair is not getting to its full potential because this, this definition, my hair did not look like this a few years ago. Why? Because I wasn't embracing my hair. I was okay with heat damage. I thought heat damage was nice because my hair was all elongated and I got to see my length more and whatever else reasons. Now, my hair is popping, okay? And length, it's growing super fast, or I'm retaining a lot of length, because I've embraced my hair. Some people aren't really comfortable with their texture, but they're trying to. Girl, keep trying, keep trying. Do what works for you, or do what works for your hair, and you will see results, okay? So but if you don't embrace your hair, that means you're not letting your hair breathe, you're wearing wigs and weaves all the time, you're not accepting your texture, you wish your hair was like somebody else's, 
your hair will not get to its full potential because you're not gonna be doing what's right for your hair. And your hair, hair is like a bratty child. If you don't give it what it wants, it's gonna act crazy, all right? <laughs> so yeah. All right, number nine, worry about ingredients and not prices. And when I say that, I mean, for example, I don't believe that I've never tried Diva Girl. Let's just put that out there so I could be wrong. I don't have the desire to try Diva Girl because although people try to say, oh, the more expensive the product, the more it probably is good for you. But I've looked at their ingredients and their ingredients are their ingredients are not as good as Shea Moisture. They're not as good as Uncle Fuki's daughter. Not as good as Camille Rose, which is way too way cheaper, okay? And I love Camille Rose, even though Camille Rose is this, is expensive. I love Camille Rose because of the ingredients in it. Now, Cantu does not have really the best ingredients in it, and it, 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 you could buy a tub of moisturizer for like five dollars, and of course you buy a tub of Camille Rose for like twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. Now you're thinking, oh, but what do you mean? Camille Rose is twenty dollars. Cantu is cheaper. So you're saying Cantu is better? No, I'm saying. Don't look at prices, look at ingredients. That could go for high prices and go for low prices. It could go for mid prices. If the product has good ingredients, it's good. Now, you also have to keep in mind about like certain things, like let's say you're buying coconut oil. It might say 100% coconut oil, but you gotta pay attention to other things like unrefined coconut oil, raw coconut oil, cold pressed, words like that. Those matter too, because sometimes you can get coconut oil and all the nutrients are gone because they cooked it basically, and it's now cooking oil. All right, pay attention to ingredients, not prices. I've seen other brands like um, what's this brand called? I forget. They it's like a macadamia oil brand. They sell a deep conditioner. That brand has so many freaking chemicals in it. I'm like, they got nice packaging and. They're expensive and stuff, but this that that stuff does not work. Okay, same thing with um, Je Miss Jessie's. Miss Jessie's is so freaking drying. All right, their their stuff's full of chemicals, and they swear that it's for natural curly hair. No, stuff is bad. All right, drying as hell, filmy, doesn't absorb properly. No, no, you're better off getting Shea Moisture, which is like what. $11 for some moisturizer versus like $30 for moisture with hella, hella, um, like, like chemicals and stuff in it. Yeah. Prices, I promise you, it will pay off. Get what your hair needs. Don't worry about prices. Worry about what your hair needs. Now, I know some things, it's like, all right, this is too expensive. Like, Camille Rose, it's too expensive. All right, find an alternative. Shea Moisture has pretty good ingredients. Use Shea Moisture, which is way cheaper, about ten dollars cheaper. <laughs> okay, so yeah, pay attention to ingredients, not prices, and I don't. That goes for any price, high or low. All right, not high prices doesn't mean it's good. Low prices doesn't mean it's bad, and vice versa. It's all about the ingredients. Okay, it's all about the ingredients. Do your research on ingredients, and especially with oils, pay attention to what wording is used on oils. Last but not least, number ten, trimming is a necessity for fast length retention, and when I say that fast length retention it's because your hair, trimming is not gonna make your hair grow faster okay it's not and that's a common misconception which or a myth or whatever but trimming more often in small doses now i suggest getting a nice cut a nice haircut so point where none all all your splinters are gone all of them continuing that haircut for every three months only needing a dusting like how i've showed you guys how i do and i promise you'll retain hella length you'll retain majority of your length I, my hair grows about six inches a year. I'm at my 10th month mark. I've retained, okay, so I've grown five inches in the last 10 months. I've retained about four inches and a quarter of that. So I've only trimmed off three quarters of my hair. That's less than an inch so far since 10 months, okay? And my hair is still blunt, crisp, healthy, thriving, all right? So by the time I get to my one year, I probably don't only need a dusting. That's six inches. From, because I trim every three months, that's a quarter of an inch every three months, that's an inch for the whole year. I retained five inches, all right? Some people don't even retain half their length. Some people don't even retain three inches. Some people, three inches. Some people don't even retain two. Some people don't even retain one. Some people don't retain anything. Trimming is important. Some people actually ret will retain some length, but their ends will be scraggly and they'll plateau. 
or their ends will be thin and it'll plateau. Or their ends will be thin, they'll just look bad, all right? And Or not even just look bad, you just you won't respond well to the product. Just a bunch of things that's bad when you don't trim, okay? Trimming is a necessity. I say that trimming is above all the most important thing I do to my hair besides deep conditioning and using my hair butter, okay? I would say deep conditioning, using my hair butter, and trimming. Trimming is number one, for real. Because without trimming, using my hair butter and conditioning wouldn't matter because I will still have scraggly ends because hair naturally starts to taper, naturally starts to uh, thin out, naturally starts to split after three months. That's just a fact, that's a fact, okay? Go to hair school, find out that, find that out. It's a fact, okay? You have to trim your hair every, well you don't have to trim every three months, but it's ideal to trim your hair every three months so that you cut it, nip it in the bud before the split ends get bad, okay? Or noticeable. So yeah, that is my complete 10 unpopular opinions for you guys. I'm pretty sure a lot of it you knew was coming because I've been preaching this stuff all along or for a while now. So yeah, I hope this video was <laughs> interesting and uh, helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Pice. Pice. I said pice. I was to say peace and I was about to say bye. Peace, bye.